The first one that I would like to highlight is one that is part of the uh, plenary session on a Sunday. It is authored with first authorship and last authorship by Drs. Lee and Abdel Wahab. Um, and it shows very elegantly using mouse models and, a zen and also a xenograft uh, that spliceosome uh, genes, which so far have not been thought uh, to be a target in the treatment of specifically MDS and AML, uh, can be a vulnerable site in patients with MDS and AML. So first, after uh, demonstrating in these mouse models uh, that this uh, gene might be relevant for the oncogenesis of MDS, they then go on to use a drug that is a global blocker of all of the spliceosomes uh, and demonstrate that that can uh, prolong a survival in these animal models. At this meeting, we are also giving a follow-up of um, the study that we also showed last year, with, which had to do with a new therapy um, called a chimeric antigen receptor therapy. Um, that is a therapy that has had a lot of press and a lot of uh, successes, specifically in the uh, treatment of patients with uh, refractory ALL. Uh, what we show this year is follow-up to last year's uh, study demonstrating with now data for more than 40 uh, patients that the uh, response rates stay in the high 80%. Uh, percents. And what is very interesting for this year's uh, study is that follow-up studies that we have done demonstrate that the overall uh, survival in these patients seem to be linked to the fact if the patients after a treatment with these uh, T-cells reach a state of minimal residual uh, disease neg negativity. Um, so this uh, study now opens the door uh, for further studies with um, this CAR therapy, not just in ALL, but also in NHL and hopefully other uh, tumors where we might make different types of CARs. Another abstract that I would like to highlight um, is an elegant study done um, by Eitan Stein um, in a multicenter uh, setting. It's a phase one, phase two study uh, with more than 180 uh, patients uh, by now, which is of course first and most of all focused on the safety and demonstrates that an agent that can be used to block the uh, mutated form of IDH1, which is a, a gene commonly uh, mutated in MDS, AML, but also a, a variety of, the, of other types of uh, cancers, uh, can be a, a successful target um, with now currently in this first study uh, response rates in the 40% uh, range, CR rates about 17%. Uh, what was very interesting in um, the studies that have been done so far in these patients is that one of the main mechanisms and uh, one of the things that seem to indicate if the therapy is going to work is uh, the level of uh, differentiation of the early myeloid cells into uh, mature myeloid cells. So that can be used now clinically also as a uh, predictor if the therapy is going to have um, um, efficacy or not in a specific patient. The last abstract that I would like to highlight is one by our uh, transplant group, our bone marrow transplantation uh, team. And it's ongoing studies that have started already in uh, 2009 to look at the role of the gut flora in all the relevant clinical outcomes of a, a transplant uh, patient. Previous studies have indicated that there's a role for changes within the flora for specifically uh, the risk of a graft versus host, but also bacterial uh, infections. Um, but the big unknown was still if there's any role for changes within the flora and relapse. All of these studies are still in the early going, but now with data for more than 400 uh, patients, Jonathan uh, Pallet uh, uh, has uh, found that certain uh, bacteria seem to be more prevalent in those patients with a lower risk of uh, relapse. So this can serve now as a starting point to take the microbiota as a possible uh, target to uh, decrease relapse after an allogeneic bone marrow transplantation. Yeah.